Hey everyone, in this one we're going to be looking at option sets. Now if you're already familiar with option sets then you can skip ahead to the next one. This is more of a beginner's type session because it covers a fairly fundamental part of bubble and that is of course option sets which you can get from the option set tab when you're in the main data tab. So what exactly are option sets? Option sets, and obviously you can go through this tutorial if you want to. We'll skip the tutorial here. Now, option sets are effectively a way to store static lists of information that you may need throughout your app. And they can be compared to data types in a way that they're actually very, very similar in many respects, apart from one key aspect, and that is that they are static. They are a static part of your app. So if we have a look at the differences between the two. So the main difference between option sets and data types is that they are 100% static, 0% dynamic, which effectively means that the data that is held within option sets, within the option sets list, are static as part of your app. Okay, They cannot be dynamically changed within your app. They're downloaded as part of the app and they're not considered to be data. Okay. So in terms of the, the main differences between option sets and, and data types is that yes, they are static, so they can't be changed, but also they have different terminologies, but effectively they're the same thing. So in data types, we have what we call records or what sometimes bubble calls things. In option sets, they're called options, simple as that. And one of the most powerful things about option sets is that they have a thing called attributes. And you can think of attributes as effectively the equivalent of fields on standard data types which means that you can store additional information about each option okay so each option is like a record and each attribute is like a field so let's say that we create one where we need to store the different types of customer for example okay so you may have customers who are full customers you have may have customers who are leads you may have customers or prospects etc etc or maybe that they are no longer active so let's say that we we set up an option set that's just called, and, and I always like to proceed my option sets with an underscore. So let's say customer status. Okay, and then we'll create that. Okay, now what we have with option sets is a built-in attribute called display. And that's generally what you'll work with to display text within your application. But you can add other attributes, but let's just stick with the one that we've got. So when we add a new option here, basically it's like we're adding a new record, a new option, and putting whatever we type in here into the display attribute, the display field of the option set. So let's say that there is a, a customer, that means that they're a full customer. Let's say that you've got lead. Let's say that you've got prospect. And let's say that you have got inactive. OK, so what we can do now, now we've set this up, is we can now attach them to data types. OK, so in our customer type, what we can do is let's say we had a field called status. OK, and, you know, one other option would be to just store it as text. Yeah, but it's not quite as it's not quite as organized. It's not as efficient as using an option set. So we do get a choice then if we scroll down to use our option set as the type. So then we can create that. And then in our status type, if we look at where we can set a default value, we then get the options of all of the options that we've selected that we've actually added to our option set. So we're gonna select customer in there and that's gonna be the default one unless it's changed at the point of, of adding that in there. So option sets are a great way to organize your data into different lists. And one of one great example is for use in navigation. So when you've got your navigation bar, whether that's vertically on the left hand side of your app or you do one horizontally on the top, is you'll have a series of options in your application. So what you can do is rather than put them individually in each icon and each text separately to have a repeating group that contains all of your navigation options. And because you can use option sets within repeating groups, then what we can do is to is to have option sets that we can use as our navigation. So let's uh, let's have a look at this one. So we'll create one called navigation, 
and let's just add some options in here so we'll say dashboard and we will say let's say customers and let's say uh, inventory and let's say let's say settings okay and what we can do then is in our app is what we can do then is to say well let's just move this over a little bit let's just mimic a okay let's mimic a kind of a navigation bar so we'll just put a repeating group in here okay and what we can do then on our repeating groups let's just name it as a good convention just a habit to get into okay then what we can say what's the type of content and then we can go and actually select our navigation option set and then what's the data source and then we can just say all navigations now if you do want to display all of them we can do uh, we can do filters and things like this so what we can do then is to say all navigations and then you can say filter and we can do that as well so you don't have to necessarily have every item in there okay but let's say we've got all navigation in there and so what we can do then is let's just uh, fix number of rows we don't want that and then let's say that the maximum is let's say 60 or something like of that nature uh, let's say 70 instead and then what we can do is and we can just add a text in there let's just let's name it as t for text nav option okay and all we need to do then similar to like we did with the data but this time the data source of the repeating group is our option set is insert dynamic data and then we can say this cells navigation display remember that that we had a built-in display attribute that contains the name of our option so if we just have a quick look at that we can see our options displayed and that's effectively how you would do Nav uh, navigation and also how you would do menus as well so let's just go and have a look at attributes here because you can add new attributes and like I say an attribute you can see it as a field so just in a data type if you wanted more information about the inventory you go and create a new field if you wanted more information on an option you would simply add a new attribute now what you could do there for example is to say well I need an icon that's going to be displayed with every option and so you could create an attribute that's called icon okay and that would just be text because you're just going to load in a, a text either a file or, or the name of an icon from an option from an icon set or something like that okay and if you notice here what you get is this modify attributes option next to each option and so what you can do is to click modify attributes and then you can go and add the the icon another use for that is let's say with our customer status let's say with each customer status you want to display a color that lets the user know the status as well as displaying it okay so I'll create a new attribute and we will say it's color and that's the text as well because it will just have like the color code in there and that way then you could reference the option sets color to display against different customers that have different statuses so let's just go back and have a look at where we were going to use option sets earlier on and that was in our search type that I covered in, in a couple of videos ago where we want a data type to say in our search type is going to effectively be a duplication of a certain subsection of all data that's stored in the system that the user can very quickly search through and the data ID contains a unique ID of the record that this particular search record references but we also need to know what the type is so that we can go away and say okay this search record that matches the search that the user entered is of a certain type and then so if it's a certain type let's say of inventory I know where to pick the inventory up if it's customer I know I need to go look in the customer but first and foremost we need to then add an option set so let's create a new option set and we will say then search type okay and uh, we can leave the just one attribute there's a main attribute in there and we can say okay this is going to be customer data and this one is going to be inventory data and so on and so forth and so what we can do then back in our data types on our search type we can add a 
new field and we can say data type and that is going to be of type search type okay so in that case whenever we're storing whenever data is added that we also want to put into our search type to enable users uh, users to search through their data fast then we can also say that they're going to search in this field here and any matches whatever they pick we know where to look for that data then and also the id of that data by storing the unique id of each one so option sets are great but there are certain places that you should use them and certain places where you should not use them so when should you use them so you definitely should use them when you have a static list of related data to store so in other words it's, it's just like we said there is it with our data types we don't need to change that in the app the user will never need to change it it is just a static list of types of searches or static types of data where you need to display static options in the list that you're going to need to use as the data so as a, of a repeating group as we ex, as we covered a moment ago such as in navigator and in menus those lists can be filtered but they can't be changed okay and also when you need to uh, assign a defined option or status as a value as we just covered in that one whereby we need to set a search type against a search record or a customer type against a customer record and to use it as a standard option rather than just as a text which which can obviously get mixed up if you assign an option it's much more efficient way to, to actually do it so when shouldn't you use them and this is when you know at some point that data may possibly need to be added or to be updated by the user these are static lists that are downloaded from the from your application they're not stored in your database they're not data if at any point you feel that that list of, of options or statuses or whatever they may be will need to be updated or added to by the user in other words they need to be dynamic then you cannot use option sets you will need to use a data type for that let's say for example you're using it for departments and that's great if you are in control of the app and that you know you're going to need to store that you can create the list or add to it as an admin if you like outside of your app and through bubble that's great but if you at some point may need to have the user change or add that information you can't use option sets so where you also shouldn't use them is when you need to store more than a few dozen items or options in a list if your option set is going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different options forget it okay use a data set that would be a much more efficient way to do it because this information is getting downloaded with your app so it's just going to bloat your application if you've got hundreds of different options in, in those lists and then obviously just like if the user ever needs to make changes you can't use an option set if you feel like within the application itself you may programmatically need to make changes to it an option in a list at any point again use data types you cannot use option sets unless it is purely static information so if you've done any coding or you're, you're into programming then obviously option sets are very similar to enumerated types where you can store static options in your code very very similar to, to that type of construct so I hope that covers option sets I hope that, that explains it well enough if not please just put something in the comments and I'll try and get back to you with that let's move on to the next one thanks for watching thanks for sticking with me on this series take it easy and I'll see you in the next one